What's up, guys? Today on this Shoki Quickie, we're doing more Eagle Moss. Look, look, guys. I seriously bought a lot of these. <laughs> and look, I'm going to try to intermix it with other things, but I can't promise anything. So if you've seen other things that are not Eagle Moss related, just be happy because, good lord, I have a lot of stuff to go through. That light wasn't on. All right, so today we're going over one of my favorite ship designs. And it is the Akira class, and this one happened to be the USS Thunderchild. I don't know if this one is from any particular episode. It might be, but this particular ship also came along in First Contact, a little bit out of DS9, uh, one or two episodes of Voyager, and I don't know, something about this ship. Like, the first time I saw it, which was in a Star Trek magazine, which I do still have, but it's somewhere... Um, I, for some reason, fell in love with this ship design. I don't know what it is. There's something about it as a very, very neat thing. Now, this is the more old-school style box. It is what it is. But it's a fairly new thing. It only came out a few years ago, and this is a re-release. So, it is what it is. It even has the crappy, normal styrofoam on the inside. You know, it's got Star Trek around there. Star Trek, Star Trek DS9. Uh, Generation Enterprise. Oh, I said Voyager. Missed that. Star Trek thing there. Nothing crazy going on there. And I would show off the book, except I'm not entirely certain where it is. If I'm honest with you. Actually, you know what? Hold on. It might be with the other ones, and I just wasn't paying attention. Okay, I lied. It's, it's not over there. Okay, where actually is the thing? So without the book to look at, we don't have a whole lot to go over. Um, I know it's here somewhere, but we'll look at the ship itself, because frankly, it's freaking cool, and it is also like the second purposeful warship that Starfleet designed like right after the Defiant so the Defiant was a warship designed initially for fighting the Borg and you know obviously it was dragged into Dominion War because frankly they needed anything and everything they could throw at the Dominion um, this was pretty much right behind that and borrows a few design aspects here and there from different things um, like the raised like weapons section back here stuff like that the lower uh front um saucer section that's all a little bit uh kind of borrowed now this particular one uh, i don't know if it's the the paint job itself might suck like the 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 paneling looks almost more like a wash than anything else and it kind of sucks it looks like i did it um which actually is kind of an insult because i know i can do better than that um, but we've also seen before when they get a little too heavy in the, um, Aztecing, sometimes it just looks ugly. Um, but the design of the ship is pretty cool. I like the new nacelle design here. It's pretty cool. Like nice big bar here. Still keeping the roundish bit up front for the Vesser collectors, but it is what it is. And I mean, to give you an idea of how new that ship is, you're talking about 63 thousands of the number. Um, and the Defiant is in the 40s it's here somewhere 74 so this actually came out num numerically before the defiant that's weird i didn't consider that defiant is also in x this one is not so obviously this is not the akira which would have been the first one this is the thunder child uh i'm assuming that these are eh, judging by the little red dooleys those have got to be the impulse engines pretty cool one gigantic phaser ring and it's not a huge ship either um, I mean, this is the bridge here, so it's, it's not a gigantic ship, and a whole lot going on over here. And you come underneath, I mean, even the deflector doesn't even really have a secondary hull, technically speaking, doesn't have a whole engineering hull, it's almost just kind of all contained under there. Nice big blue deflector dish going on there. I believe this is technically, if I remember correctly, this is the shuttle bay. Um, I, it, I had to read something else to find out that was actually the shuttle bay coming out the front. Which is interesting. And I think they have another one right there. A little tampo details there. And this is like a photon torpedo launcher, stuff like that. Um, you know, for something that's called a warship, it doesn't seem to be armed super heavily. It doesn't even have. It's got a couple dorsal uh, weapons there. This is still pretty cool. I believe these are phaser banks too, just little round ones. But I really like this design. I don't know what it is about it. Just something about this design really speaks to me. Now, once again, it's kind of a muddled mess on the actual 
in hand dealy, but it's still very cool. I like the twin, maybe it's the twin body thing there that I really enjoy. And yeah, it does look a little bit like the NX01, which might also have something to do with that, but this came out before Enterprise, if I remember correctly. The stand is fairly simple, it just comes right up in there and holds it at a fun, fun angle. Just looks pretty cool. Now we'll bring it out, at least things that would have been around during the war. So bring out the Galaxy Class, which is a much bigger ship. This thing is meant to be kind of nimble. And actually, in the episode um, of Voyager that it was featured specific, like specifically, it was with two Defiant Classes, and it was trying to hunt down the Prometheus. So and here is... <laughs> The smallest yet largest ship. And once again, this is the thing that makes no sense. So this thing is like nine and a half inches long. And it's not even close to the proper scale. Um, sometimes I think about mixing the mixing the size classes to get the scale somewhat close. So like by by like the normal the normal Enterprise D, because it'll be closer to the actual proper size. And then the thing that literally makes no sense, of course, is the largest single ship I own which also fought beside this thing in the Defiant. Um, of course, the Defiant is my favorite thing ever from Star Trek, realistically. It's just, you know, it's it's up there with the Millennium Falcon with being a badass little ship, super fast, super powerful, you know, cloaking device and whatnot. You know, very dusty, though. That is what it is. So, basically, you know, the Dominion War was full of a lot of these things, and, of course, there was a few other types of ships that filled out the ranks but you know this was like things that were doing a lot of damage in the in the dominion war so yeah i digs it so that guy still pretty cool and i don't talk about it very much like the cost wise these are all roughly 75 dollars you know give or take some of them i caught on special and like i said if you buy from eagle moss sometimes you're going to catch things on special like uh, and if you order seemingly more than one, uh, or maybe that's just the special they're currently running, you get discounts. Um, and I think if you have a membership, it gets even cheaper, things like that. So if you're interested, there are a lot of options for these things. Oh, something that's really funny. Uh, one of the listings, especially on BBTS, if I remember correctly. No, I take it back. That's actually Eagle Moss's actual website. The normal Akira class ship, so the little guy, which is probably only about that big, is upside down in the promo photos. It is legitimately like this. <laughs> so it's actually arranged how you would think a normal Starfleet ship would be, except the deflector wouldn't be there. So imagine the saucer section just sort of flipped so the deflector is here, the bridge is there. Uh, but that's funny that somebody took pictures of the damn thing and posted it on the official website incorrectly. I would be super embarrassed if I were the Eagle Moss peoples. But yeah, that's cool. And it's also very dark. I don't know if it's just all the uh, Aztecing and crap, but it is much darker than the rest of the ships in the fleet. Also, i got to wonder if you can hear the fan. I wasn't running the fan yesterday. Um, I just thought about that as I'm sitting here. Um, I'll find the book eventually, and that's annoying because I don't know exactly where it ended up. It actually couldn't entirely be in the closet now that I think about it. Um, because it's not with all the other books, and I think it is one of the large books, not one of the small ones, unfortunately. But either way, that's going to be it for this review, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know so far, like, what is your, one of your favorite ship designs from Star Trek? I know I've got a very you know, slim, uh, have viewership for this type of thing but there's got to be some star trek nerds out there this is one of my favorites um and i'm really really happy i've gotten it and as soon as it was in stock at bbts i ordered it um so as it stands i only have one more to look at from the current collection as i, I should say and we're going all the way back to disco era that's right the 70s no not really we're just going back to discovery yep a, very, a small ship that's way too big. Let's check it out next time. Remember, as always, guys, keep on nerding. But no one has nerded before. <laughs>